Hello everyone, this is Jordan the Tattooed Stitcher. I'm back for another floss tube update and it's been two weeks since my last video. Uh, judging by the piles around me, um, it looks like it's been a few months, but it's it hasn't. It just builds up really quickly. So we're going to dive right in. I have some finishes. I've got one finish and I've got one, two, three, four, five FFOs. So I'm going to dive into those first. Uh, I don't want to knock the camera. So my first, my project that I finished was, oh, and I put the pattern away, but it is Tis Spring from With Thy Needle and Thread. And I was pretty close to a finish. I think the last time you saw it, I think I had half of it done, um, but I finished it like just a few days after my last video and I fully finished it that weekend. And here is my fully finish of Tis Spring. So I stitched this one shepherd's bush style, meaning I used one thread over two fabric thread, one strand of thread over two fabric threads on 32 count, which is um, a lot of the times what shepherd's bush does when they stitch the models for their store. It just kind of gives it a more um, diffused look and I love the way that it turned out. So it was too big, in my opinion, it was too big to turn into a pillow because that's how originally this was supposed to be finished. Um, but yeah, too big. So I thought a frame would be perfect. <clears throat> this is just a frame I picked up at Michael's and the fabric is 32 count. Uh, I think it's buttermilk, but I'm probably wrong. Um, from no live and die LA. So I used all the called for threads. I love the little bees. It just turned out perfect. I love the way that this looks. I already have it displayed um, on my island and I have a little like one of those turn style like decorative table things and it sits in there with some other things and I love it. I love it so much. So that one was really fun. And then another Michael's frame because when I went to buy that frame I was so I went to Michael's because I was picking up some that I'll show you in a second that I had framed there and their floor frames were all still buy one, get one free. So I found this frame, just a, I think it's a 10 by 10 white frame. Um, and I framed my soda stitch, what's this called? Something of the sea, <laughs> I can't remember. But I finished her last year in January, I think. And my daughter has been begging to have it in her room, um, especially ever since I finished Cat, uh, Cat's Bakery for my son's room. She really, really wants more in her room. So um, I used, I did not pin this. Normally I pin um, and tape because I can't be bothered to lace. But this one is on sticky board, actually. Um, I had a couple weird pieces of sticky board left. And so I kind of just like mod podge them all together to get her on. And I, mean, I don't think you can tell that it's on sticky board in here. I'm holding it at an angle because the reflection. So yeah, really excited to have this one done. Both my daughters have been fighting over it, actually. <clears throat> okay, and then I'll show this other one that I had also done myself before I show the ones that Michael's did. Um, so this one, I went to Hobby Lobby, oh, last week, I can't remember what day, and stumbled upon um, the mother load of all clearance frames. Um, I came home with 20 frames. Some of them are on the floor here, some of them are on the floor here, and some of them are behind me in the closet on the floor. I don't think I paid more than $9 for each of these frames. Half of them were custom frames and half of them were like off the floor frames. So really, really exciting because after paying what I paid to have these ones framed at Michael's, I don't think I'll ever be doing that again. <laughs> so this frame was a $3 frame I got at Hobby Lobby and it was absolutely perfect for Puppy Bakery. <laughs> it's so cute and it fit perfect. And this one, just like my cat's bakery, is also framed on sticky board. 
I love it. I thought the frame was just perfect. And so this one will also be going in my son's room. He gets both, both the bakeries. He's very, very excited about it. He keeps asking me, when are you going to make a video so I can have my cross stitches? <laughs> oh, now he gets them. Okay, and it's a little, little story time on the ones I had framed at Michael's. So the first one was Lantern Lane. And I know I had told you that I tore it out of the original frame that I had done at Hobby Lobby years ago because I just didn't like it. And I repurposed that frame for glittering leaves. And so this shape of this project is really awkward. It's really long, but like not super tall. So it's, it doesn't fit in a standard frame both ways. One way it would, one way it would not. So it was awkward. Um, so I was browsing the floor frames at Michael's and there was a frame that I loved. Like the coloring is exactly what I was imagining for this frame. Um, the shape is just a little, I don't know. It's not my favorite like shape wise, but for the price I paid for this frame, I thought it was worth it. So what I'd done was the, I originally asked if they would cut a mat to size in this frame. So that's why I left it at Michael's to be framed. And they were like, do you want us to pin it? And I was like, sure, save me, you know, an hour. And I went to pick it up and it was horrendous. I had never seen something pinned so badly before ever in my life. I think my seven year old could have done a better job. And I said, yikes, um, can we try again? <laughs> so they did and still was just atrocious. And at this point I was over it. So I just took it home. I tore it all apart and I did it myself. And I left the mat off because I think that's why they were struggling so much. They had so many excuses too, saying Hobby Lobby damaged the fabric before and we had to cover these holes. Um, they tried to blame that my stitching was off, <laughs> that I had too many rows in the house. <laughs> so <laughs> I was like, no, no. So uh, it's fine. I left the mat off because I think that's what was, um, also, they were struggling with lining it up with the mat. So, without further ado, this is Lantern Lane. So, this is an off-the-floor frame. I loved the gold detail, and I thought the wood color matched the roof of the house perfectly. Um, so, you can see there's more space on the sides than on the top and bottom because it's an awkward size. Uh, but I'm okay with it because I think it's beautiful and I love this frame for it so much more. And as you can see, there's no damage to the fabric from Hobby Lobby. So don't know what they were talking about. Um, the glass is obviously not, not a museum glass because it was off the floor. So it's got a glare, but it's beautiful. I pinned it myself, obviously, and it's perfectly straight. I had no issue. <laughs> Um, but I love it and I'm really excited to display it later this year. I think I'm actually going to hang it up here in my sewing room for the rest of the year because like, yeah, it's Christmassy wintry, but it's also really pretty. <laughs> so there's Lantern Lane. And then the other one I had framed at Hobby Lobby was my red sampler from Ellen Maurer Straw. Straw? Straw? It's a freebie on her website. Um, if you Google it, I'm sure you could still find it. I finished this in 2020 and I, it's an awkward size as well. I couldn't find a standard frame that worked. So I was like, you know what? I haven't had anything custom framed in years and years. So I'm just gonna have it framed. Now, when I picked it up, it was so bad. It was so bad. I laughed and I, cause I thought it was like, this is a joke. This has to be a joke. I have never seen something so horrible. And my lantern lane at the same time, I was just like, are you guys like pulling my leg? What's that going on? So they tried again. <laughs> and when they called me until it was done, they said, you know, for the inconvenience, we took off the, they took off the, the pinning fee and they added glass for free. And I was like, great, thanks. And we went to pick it up and it was still horrible but I was over it. So I took it home and I redid it myself. And while it's not perfect still, 
believe me when I say it's 180 degrees different. <laughs> it's so much better. Um, so I did the frame is a custom frame. Okay, so here it is. So the problem I think everyone was having, because I had this problem myself, was that the frame, the border is one stitch. So it's really, really hard to get a one stitch border perfectly, perfectly straight. As you can see, my attempt is not perfect, but it is better, I promise. And it's beautiful. I just love the way that it's looking in this frame. Um, I was gonna go kind of maybe a reddish frame. This almost has a little reddish tint. I just love the little imperfections in the wood. It's beautiful. I don't know where I'm gonna hang it up. Cause red sampler, I don't know. Where do you guys hang red samplers in your houses? I don't know. But this was my first sampler I ever stitched. That was like what I'd consider sampler. I stitched it in, this is on 36 count picture this plus sand, stitched with, um, it's called Primitive Christmas from Victorian Model Threads. And I love it. It's beautiful and huge. Okay. So rambling over about finishes. Now I had two, two new starts and then a lot of whips. So we're going to dive into those. Um, my first, what should I do first? We'll do whips first. So one of the whips I worked on over the last two weeks is coffee and eggs from the artsy housewife. I'm stitching this on 40 count XG Designs Grandma Slip. So I finished filling in the coffee in the cup. I started on, I, I can't remember how much of her you saw, but I basically did this girl and this egg and started on the branch. I did have a leaf here, um, but it was off. So I had to pull it all out, um, but it's, Beautiful. I'm stitching this with a mix of the called for and from stash. I love this project. I just keep it on the hoop because I'm like stitch on it every few days. Oh, sorry, camera. Okay. And then another whip I worked on was birds of a feather from Blackbird Designs. I started this project with Bernadette at Stitch West just this past spring. I'm stitching this with the Vicki Clayton Silk Conversion. They're gorgeous. Um, on 40 count, what's this called? Where's the tag? 40 count vintage pecan butter from Lakeside Linens. And I'm very happy with the progress I made on this. I got the whole border done and that flower at the bottom, that flower at the top, and that um, interesting looking flower here on the side. <laughs> Nipple flower, anyone? Anyways, I got the border done and a few little doodads and I loved it. I loved stitching on this. This border just flowed so nicely. Um, the counting was really easy. Doing these little doodads was kind of annoying, but the border met on my first try. So I'm calling that a win. Very happy with my progress on that one. A new start that's okay I think the rest are all <laughs> how many new starts did I have uh okay I think the rest of the things I worked on are actually new starts <laughs> okay I gotta get my pictures out for some of these oh work with me iPad okay was this the first new start? Yes. First new start. I started Mother's Day weekend on, I think I started it Saturday. 
and I don't have the charts. Okay, what I when I'm showing you pictures on my iPad, I'm taking pictures of my charts, putting them into my good notes, and then I put my charts away because sometimes they're borrowed and sometimes like I just don't want to be dealing with charts in bags and things and getting them all crusty. Oops, sorry. So here's my picture of my pink sparrow. Pink Sparrow Sampler from With Thy Needle and Thread. Um, I kitted this at Stitch West this past spring and I knew I really wanted to start it soon. And so I did. What am I stitching this on? 40 count raw muslin from Color and Cotton. And I got a lot done on this. Um, I was just feeling it. So this is my start of Pink Sparrow Sampler. I got the border done, got some border flowers in and some started on that big giant flower pot thing and one of those weird little dogs. So I'm really, really happy with this start. I just had such a good time on it. Okay, though, I will give a um, warning if you are going to stitch this. <sighs> Learn from my mistakes. Okay, so these three sides, the counting is all the same. The top, the counting is one stitch different. One stitch different. So you go all around, do 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 and you get here you're like whoa wait <laughs> i'm three stitches higher here what's going on so fair warning the top row of this chart is one stitch different than all three bottom the other three sides but it's beautiful and it's going to fit in a standard eight by ten frame which is even better <laughs> so i love it oh i love it the color is so fun um the cover photo is really deceiving. It looks really muted, but then you start stitching with these colors and they're like way more vibrant. Like the dog, the dogs at the bottom are stitched in, is it in weathered barn? And my weathered barn is like purpley red. And they're like stripes and the dogs are orange, like straight up orange. So it's interesting but the colors are really fun, so I'm enjoying it. Okay. All right, and then my next new start was on Mother's Day, and I know I had said this in my other video that I was going to start this on Mother's Day, and that is, I have the PDF of this chart. And it's a million pages, so let me just get to the very first page. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's so many pages. Where's the cover? Okay, finally, geez. Consider the lilies. That was my Mother's Day start. And I'm stitching this with um, the Vicki Clayton silks. I did have a question on how I'm storing these silks because they come on um, little like bobbins, round bobbins. And I did not enjoy working with those for Winter Rose Manor. So I put them on floss cards. Um, I just tore off the, the label that comes on the bobbins and stuck them on this card. And I'm storing them in a thread bed. So like I just, just kind of tuck them in there and it keeps them from like flying all over in my bag and getting all fuzzy and ruined. Keeps them protected and safe. I thought I'd show that really quickly. Okay, I'm stitching this on 40 count baby sheep extra designs. This is my start on it. So I started it on Mother's Day, Sunday. I didn't get very much time to stitch on it on Sunday. Um, so I stitched on it the Monday after, and then I stitched on it yesterday, Sunday. So this is my progress. 
I have a page finish on it, but girl, hold, hold on. The page was this big. It was like one of the ending pages. <laughs> so don't get excited. It was just this much. <laughs> so I started on the page above it. I'm just going to go page by page because that's how you eat an elephant, right? One bite at a time. Um, but I am loving, loving, loving it. It's so interesting to stitch. There's so much to see. Um, every little, like every little um, thing is like a surprise. Like it's just so different. Everything is different. There's the repetition is only here. And I don't even mind this repetition. The counting is really easy. The silks are gorgeous and these flowers are really pretty. So I am thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying this project. Um, already planning to do his eyes on Sparrow when this one's done in a decade. So watch out for that. <laughs> but I love it. I love it, love it, love it. I'm having so much fun with that. And then, what was the day? Was it Saturday? This weekend was really, really crazy. This whole last week has been really busy and my brain was just like, I need something to not be like busy and just fun. And so I just wanted to start another project and I've had this project kitted um, since December. So it is My Home in the Garden from Liz Matthews. I love this sampler. It is stunning. So it's stitched in, she calls for Gloriana silks. No girl, I'm not doing that. Uh, the DMC, I've seen a stitch in DMC, it's gorgeous. But my friend Bernadette went to Japan. Well, she's gone to Japan twice since this incident, once more since this. She's going to Japan and I thought Cosmo threads would be fun to try. So she so graciously picked up the Cosmo conversion for me while she was in Japan. And so I thought, I have the Cosmos, I have the fabric, why not just start it? And you know what I found very interesting? So this chart is very like summary. There's bee skeps, tulips, little dragonflies, bees, summary. But look at the threads. If I was just looking at those threads, I would say this is a fall, a fall themed pattern right? So it'll be really interesting to see how all these colors come together in this chart to make it summery. So there we go. That is my last new start and whip. Now I'll go into uh, maybe plans. I have a few plans. Um, so my friend Amy, her channel is X Stitching and Adventures. Let me put this down. She just finished this chart and so graciously allowed me to borrow it because it is gorgeous. It is Blackbird Designs Moon Garden. I didn't have a fabric in my stash. I know, I didn't, amazing. Um, but I didn't have a fabric in my stash that I want like color wise. Like I don't buy gray, like really dark colored fabrics and I wanted it to be kind of on a darker fabric. So I ordered a piece of, it's the called for in this chart is 18th century Rook from r and Reproductions. So I just ordered a little small cut of that from Hollis, Hollis Hands Creates. And I pulled a thread from my stash. These are not all the threads. These are just some of the ones that are similar to the colors that I pulled. I also have a few of the called force coming just because I couldn't, I didn't feel like I could match them very well, but here are the threads I have pulled. I think it'll be really pretty. So I do plan to start this very soon this summer, most likely. Um, it's not very big. I think I probably will finish it this summer too. Um, okay, and so leading into my haul, well, okay, this is a plan also. So today is Monday. I do Merry Monday right now because I'm taking a pause on Miras. Um, Merry Monday. So I'm gonna pull out a project I have not pulled out for some time. If you see if I can find, you can find my pictures of it right away. Let 
Well, where the heck is it? Oh, here it is. Okay. Going to grandma's. Stitching this with my table for mates from Queen City. And so I'm going to pull this out today. Stitch my threads and stitch on it. Last time I stitched on it, I worked up towards the roof. And then I got to the roof and realized I didn't have any of the Krennics that are called for. And I'm not so sure that I want to stitch Krennics. So I'm going to work probably across and down and try to get to some areas where there's some good fill-in so that the next time I'm doing a Zoom with my Table 4 mates, I can just do some fill-in and no counting. So that is on my agenda for today. Even though I'm not really into it, I'm just having a hard time wanting to stitch on winter and fall and Christmas and things right now when I'm so desperate for warm weather. So we'll see. If I put three threads in, I'll be happy. Okay, so in other plans, uh, and this ties into my haul, I bought a few PDF charts. Do I not have them on here yet? Oh shoot, they're on my phone. Well, oh, I'm gonna see if I can find them really quick. Sorry, I'm not prepared for this, obviously. Obey me. Okay. So I bought two PDF charts from the Blue Flower. Um, I, if given the choice between paper and PDF, I will go PDF every time because I stitch on my iPad. It's just much easier. Okay, where are you? So the charts I bought were Seasons of the Heart Spring. Sorry if you can't see that very well. Seasons of the Heart Spring. Or is that summer? That one's summer. Sorry. I bought spring and summer. But the one that is on my immediate to start, I'm going to start it on June 1st. And I think Amy's going to join me. She's got the hearts for Pam Blue Flower. I'm going to start Seasons of the Heart Spring. So I kitted this one with floss from my stash because it calls for DMC but I thought why do DMC when I have so much over dye thread I can use so I just pulled the DMC and I matched as best I could with threads from my over dyed stash some of these are some of my new color and cottons and some of these are just ones I've had forever. And then the fabric I pulled to stitch it on is called Heather on the Hill. It is from a club fabric from Grace Notes. It's like a bluish, sky bluish. I think it'll be really pretty. So I'm excited to start that. Um, since I finished his spring, I wanted another little seasonal small. Small, those aren't super small. Um, Another piece of my haul, where did it go? Oh, another piece of my haul was I got these tiny baby Premax scissors. I don't know if you've ever used Premax scissors. Ooh, I love them. They're my favorite, favorite scissors of all time. I got these tiny baby ones to keep mainly like in my travel stitching case because they're, they won't get taken away at an airport because the blade is so small. Because I travel so much, guys, you know. Okay, and the rest of my haul is more thread. <laughs> more thread, you guys. It was Mother's Day. We were on the back patio. Sorry if my lighting just got really bad. It's a storm is coming in, of course. I hope that it's not too dark. We were on the back patio, the sun was shining. The blue moons were flowing and <laughs> my finger slipped 
on my checkout cart button. I don't think I'll go through every single one of these because there's 45. <laughs> there's 45 skeins of thread here. Womp. But I love them. I'm so excited to uh, use them. And then the last piece of my haul is technically a gift. Um, for Mother's Day, I was given a Kindle. Guys, I'm cool now. I even decorated it with stickers. Look, High Lords and Wing Leaders. There's a cat and a stained glass window. Virgo, that's me. There's Frodo, one of the favorite people in the world. Some mushrooms and where the hell have you been, Loka? And I have this MagSafe pop socket for easy reading. Now you can have the book cover be your screensaver, but you don't necessarily need everyone knowing what I'm reading. <laughs> so I really, really, really been loving having a Kindle. Um, I used to read on my phone and the phone light was starting to give me migraines. And so I was like, I need to come up with something better. And so the Kindle was it. They were on sale for Mother's Day. And so finally broke down and got one. And I love it. I love it, love it, love it, love it, love it so much. Okay. One thing I was going to say was I have abandoned a whip. And normally I do this like secret, secret, and I don't tell you. <laughs> but I thought I would tell you this time and own up to my abandonment of this whip. So the whip I'm abandoning, not forever, but I'm abandoning this whip for now, is Plum Street Samplers Winter Moon. I love this chart. I love it. I love the threads. I think it's beautiful. What I don't love is the fabric that was called for and was sent in the kit that I started this on. So the fabric is 40 count salt bush from Fox and Rabbit. It's like a grayish. This is how far I got. Those bricks are not filled in, they're just outlined. So not a crazy amount I've done. But I never, ever, ever wanted to pull this project out and I didn't know why. Why don't I like stitching on this? Because it's beautiful and I love it. Why do I not want to stitch on this? And I've decided that it's the fabric. I do not think this gray color is doing this project justice. And I've seen a few people finish this, but they've stitched it on other colors. And I love it so much more on like a tan or brownish color. I think it makes it so much more warm. Sorry, getting a call. I think it makes it so much more warm um, because right now the colors are cool toned. These are cool tone colors and we've got a cool tone fabric. It's too cool and cool for me. I'm not enjoying it. So I'm saving this piece of fabric and I'm going to start this probably later this winter on a warmer toned fabric. And I think I will love it so much more. So there's my owning up for an abandonment. Okay. Announcements. I'm going to be posting some bags on my Instagram. Um, I thought I'd show you here like the preview of what they're going to look like. I don't have all of them finished yet, but it's just, I have some of them finished, but I'll show you the fabric as like a preview. Um, I'm going to be posting them on my Instagram page, Monday, May 27th at 10 AM um, mountain standard time. So if you would like any of these, that's when they'll be posted. Sorry. Okay, so I'm really excited about these. They're so cute. And I'm doing, these are like kind of summery spring colors. So the first style, and these aren't ironed yet. So if they look like wrinkly and puffy, like they're not ironed and they're not charmed yet. This is a preview, peeps. Okay, so this one is called Summer Soiree. I, I just died over the cakes. <laughs> And the lime green zipper and the inside is this bright pink with little bees. I love it. Oh, it's really hard for me not to keep all of these. Love it. So there's one. 
style that will be posted. Another style that we will be posted. I don't remember the name of this fabric, but it's like little sewing notions. So bobbins and scissors and needles and pins and hoops and a hot pink. I did a hot pink zipper and the inside is coordinating pink and zippers and bobbins. And I love it. Oh, I love this so much. I have more of this fabric coming um, with a pink background instead of aqua and the inside instead of being pink with zippers, it's white. So I will have more of these too. So there's another preview and these ones aren't finished yet. These are just the fabrics. Um, I will be posting bags with this as the outside and this is the inside. It's very summery, love it. And I also will be posting these ones. I love it so much. Obsessed with this combo. Pink and black, it's so cute. Pink and black, but make it summer, right? Love it. Okay, so there's that, watch for that. Um, now I guess, oh, one more announcement. I am going to, well, I'm planning to go to Stitch North in spring uh, 2025. <laughs> yeah, a whole year away. Um, I signed up for, for Stitch North. I'm going weekend two. Um, if you're going, I'm so excited to see who's going and who's going to be there. Um, going to Canada. Wow. <laughs> I've never flown international before. I've never been to Canada before. Um, so it's a little nervous making, but exciting. And I'm really, really, really excited to go. So there's that. Okay, life. Um, this past week has been nuts. It's recital week for dance. So we were rehearsing a lot and doing costuming and all that jazz. Uh, it, was, it was a lot. It's been a really busy week. It's not over yet. So we had first recital on Friday and we had second recital on Saturday. <laughs> and then today we have um, team and cast pictures. So we'll be doing hair all fancy and pretty and running down to go do pictures um, for <laughs> from like 3 to 5.30. It's going to be a long afternoon. Um, but then after pictures, Tuesday and Wednesday, we have auditions for team again. Because Parker wants to do team again and I'm fine with that. I I really loved having her on team this year. We had so much fun and being able to see her perform two times at the recital uh, versus once was a lot more fun than just the one time. Um, so we're definitely trying out for team again. So hopefully she makes it again. And then Sunday, we took the kids to the circus. <laughs> the circus came um, to a town like 30 minutes from me and they're called Cirque Mal Mache, Mas Maseo, maybe it's Maseo, um, but it's basically like horses, like trick horse show. So they had a lot of horses and these really pretty um, ladies doing tricks on the horses and the men were doing tricks on the horses and the horses were like doing dancings and stuff. It was really cool. Um, and there was like acrobats and fire and we had a really good time. Um, the kids loved it. So if that ever comes near your town, go check it out because we had a really good time. Um, and then the weather's just been on and off. Uh, Mother's Day weekend was gorgeous. It was like 75, sunny, beautiful. We sat outside all day long, every single day. So I got a lot of use out of my lap stands uh, stitching outside on the patio. And then this past weekend was extremely windy, like 60 mile per hour wind gusts. Uh, I was surprised that the circus didn't get canceled on our day because it was pretty windy, but it wasn't as windy as the few days before and they did cancel the show the day before. Um, so it's really windy and now we're getting like, it's so cloudy outside. It's like on and off uh, weird snow, rain, and I don't know. <laughs> I'm just so sick of this, you guys. I just want it to be warm. <sighs> so 
weather's been, ugh. but we got all of our bushes and trees. And when I say we, I mean, my husband got all of those planted and put in and we just have to do like edging on the landscaping and like bark. Um, and then that'll be done. So that's really exciting. He's working on the garden now, figuring out where he's going to plant all his little seedlings he's been growing for the last month. Um, so <laughs> TBD on that, uh, school is almost out. My son has his field trip this week. He's so excited about, and then, I mean, there's only two weeks left of school. So, and then next weekend, or no, it's this weekend is Memorial Day weekend. Oh my gosh. The time this month just flies. Um, we had a get together with our, with my husband's family for Mother's Day. And, um, there's a couple birthdays in his family on, in May. So we kind of did it all at once. And that day was gorgeous. We all got sunburned outside. It was amazing. Um, shows I've been watching. I rewatched The Witcher. There are three seasons of The Witcher. And they're filming a fourth season. But it's not Henry as The Witcher. It's Liam. So I'm not sure how I feel about it. Um, we'll see. <laughs> I'm going to give it a chance. But I mean, Henry, he did us so dirty. But anyways, I rewatched The Witcher. I love that show. Um, we've been watching Vikings season four. We're finished though. We just started season five. We're feeling a bit burnout of that. So we're probably going to take pause on that for a bit. Um, I rewatched Bridgerton season two because Bridgerton season three came out on Wednesday last week. So I rewatched season two on Tuesday. Um, season two is my favorite season. I will die on that hill. Um, my favorite trope of all time is enemies to lovers slow burn uh it had everything and all the things Anthony and kate i live and die for them uh season three they only released four episodes <sighs> it's like torture it's rude my thoughts if you haven't seen it yet there might be some spoilers here but four episodes my thoughts um they changed their costume designer and it's obvious that they changed their costume designer for the show. I think that they're falling mostly flat. I love the costuming in season two. Season two, those costumes were incredible. And in season one, the costumes are incredible. They're just gorgeous, stunning. The details, the beading, the, the embroidery, just everyone kind of had their little niche. Like the Featheringtons were outrageous colors. And then the Bridgertons were all cool tones and, and subtle and um, flattering shapes and Kate and Edwina were all like rich, deep gem colors. And we got none of that this season. We got Cressida de Calpa, these humongous, ridiculous boat sleeves. I don't understand the sleeves on her dresses. I loathe them. Um, uh, Eloise, I thought all of her dresses made her look like she was 50 years old. Like, Aren't you supposed to be like 15, 16 in this show? Her outfits were not good. Not good. They made her look so much older than she's supposed to be in the show. I wasn't a fan. Um, same with her hair do. I wasn't feeling the hair do. Just made her look so old. I wasn't into it. Um, Colin. <laughs> so I know they were trying to go for like <laughs> cowboy. <laughs> I did not like it. <laughs> windswept traveler leather coat vibes I don't know oh I don't know <laughs> I want to see like he had a look in one of the first episodes at a ball where he he had said that the the style of his um like vest and things was French and I loved that outfit that he wore with the embroidered vest and everything loved it um but these weird cloaks that he's wearing uh not into it Penelope had like a major glow up this season, which we knew was coming. Um, but she's got like her and Francesca have like permanent smoky eye and acrylic nails. And I don't know, it bothers me a bit because it's Regency era. Like I like things to be a bit more true to that. And I know this is not true to it in any way, shape or form, but the smoky eyes really bothered me. It's too much, too much smoky eyes. But overall, I enjoyed it. Uh, I think they're rushing Paul... Penelope and Colin's story they were really rushing it we they get they had like two lessons and conversations and then all of a sudden we're in love 
Um, we knew Penelope was already in love with him, but he was like, you know, his face coming to grips with that for like two episodes was really annoying. <laughs> but obviously I'm going to watch the next season and I'll probably rewatch the four episodes before then. Uh, but just some nitpicky things about it, I guess. Overall, really enjoyed it. I love the show. So uh, the queen had an amazing wig <laughs> in one of the episodes. It was like a scene with like a swan moving around in it and lights in it. It was amazing. I loved it. So that's all I've been watching, really, I think. Can't think of any movies I've watched. I've been reading, but there's enough people that talk about books on here. I won't go into books. So you see my plans. I'm going to continue Consider the Lilies on Sundays. Um, I'm going to pick up the Christmas one today. These new starts not until the next time. Oh, I want to continue on the Liz Matthews one too. I sh Did I even show it to you? I don't think I even showed it to you. <laughs> Rewind. <laughs> I showed you the chart, but I didn't show you my whip. Guys, <laughs> there's my whip of the Liz Matthews, my home in the garden. <laughs> um, so I started this on Saturday and I only got an evening to stitch on it. So it looks like I did a ton, but you guys, this border is amazing to stitch. This is probably the best border I've ever stitched. It is so easy. Like it just flows. There's minimal counting. Like I left all my tails too. Couldn't be bothered to cut them all off. It is so great. This border is fantastic. I can't wait to do more and get to like the little, the little teeny, like the bee skep and the tulips. And I'm so excited. I'm stitching this on 36 count. Oh gosh, what is it? Marbled bunny, 36 count marbled bunny from X Jude Designs. Sorry, wow. Brain fart there. <laughs> I was just too excited to get into the rest of it. Um, okay, so that is it officially for reals, for real. Yes. Um, I will see you probably in two weeks, maybe sooner. We'll see how much I can get done. And I hope you get all the stitching time you want. And thank you for coming and seeing me. And I will see you on the next one. Bye.